Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Jason Gilleran. I am an associate professor at Oakland University William Beaumont Hospital School of Medicine. Today, I'm going to be presenting our abstract improved global response outcome after intradetrusor injection of adult muscle derived cells for the treatment of underactive bladder. I have no affiliations to disclose, but I would like to point out that Dr. Chancellor is the inventor of the AMDC technology and does receive monthly payments from Cook Myocyte. However, this is an institution, non-industry funded trial. Some background, underactive bladder or UAB is a common problem and is a large unmet need in urology. It's associated with aging and neurologic conditions. And our current treatments, particularly pharmacologic therapies, are very limited efficacy. Most patients are reliant on clean intermediate catheterization, which can have a significant impact on quality of life. Here at Beaumont Hospital, under the direction of our former chairman, Dr. Diokno, we have a long interest in aging bladder research with NIH funding. And Dr. Chancellor has pioneered the use of autologous muscle-derived stem cell therapy, or AMDC, for women with stress urine incontinence. So our aim in this abstract was to initiate the first in-human clinical trial with regenerative medicine for AMDC injection into the bladder wall to treat underactive bladder. Primary objective was to evaluate safety immediately and after initial injection and at six months post initial injection. Our secondary objectives were to evaluate safety and e efficacy at 12 months, as well as outcome using the outcome measures of a global response assessment, as well as changes in voiding frequency, urinary voided volume and voided volume with catheterization on a three day bladder diary. This study was open to men and women over 18 who had symptoms of difficult bladder emptying over six month time and who had not responded to prior medical or surgical therapy. They had to have a minimum post void residual of 150 cc's with no evidence of bladder outlet obstruction and an underactive bladder questionnaire score of three or to be on intermittent catheterization completely. We excluded anyone with the anticoagulant therapy, a neurologic impairment, prior treatment in the last six months for UAB, pelvic organ cancer, or pelvic organ prolapse. To date, we have enrolled 20 non-neurogenic UAB subjects. And at baseline, all of these subjects underwent uh, testing to confirm underactive bladder and to a, a, a rule out obstruction, which included a medical history, history including questionnaires, physical exam, PVR measurements, three-day bladder diary, full multi-channel urodynamic testing, and cystourethroscopy. The muscle that was used for the injection was obtained through a percutaneous approach uh, as an outpatient minimally invasive procedure with local anesthesia. A spirotome needle was used to acquire 50 to 250 milligrams of skeletal muscle from the vastus lateralis muscle on the thigh. This tissue is then shipped to Cook Myocyte in a temperature controlled container. The muscle biopsy was then processed and generated muscle progenitor cells that were frozen and shipped back to Beaumont Hospital and then injected into the bladder. The injection process was also done as a minimally invasive outpatient approach using local anesthesia with intravesical, lidoc intravesical lidocaine. 125 million AMDC were injected per injection for a total of 250 million cells. These were injected through 30 intradetrusor sites of 0.5 mLs, very similar to injection for botulinum toxin therapy. In this study, we had 20 subjects of whom 16 were men, and of those 16, seven had undergone prior TURP for BPH. We had 13 patients with idiopathic underactive bladder, and of these 20, only one had a history of diabetes, seven had prior pelvic surgeries. Of these 20, 10 were on clean intermittent catheterization only, and nine were on intermittent catheterization and voided as well. So looking at adverse events, we divided it into injection-related events, which included urinary tract infection in seven patients, but also gross hematuria, transient urinary leakage, and a rash from antibiotic in one patient. For biopsy-related events, we had a bruised thigh, vasovagal response, hypoglycemia, and nausea in one subject each, and we had two respiratory infections, two neck or shoulder orthopedic problems, one patient with AFib, and one with nonspecific ST abnormalities. Overall, no serious procedure or treatment-related 
adverse events occurred and no adverse events related to the product were reported. All of the uh, related AEs were either expected complications and either self-resolved or easily treated. At follow-up, we saw an improved response with a GRA of greater than five in 30% of patients at three months, but this increased to 50 and then 58% at 12 months. In looking at changes in voided volume and catheterization, we noted that patients who had an improvement by a global response assessment score of greater than five showed an improvement in both voided volumes increasing and a decrease in, voided, in urinary, volu urinary volume per catheterization. Lastly, we saw that over time, there was a decrease in post-void residual volume, particularly in those who had a GRA response of greater than five. And voiding efficiency, which started out at or near zero in almost all patients at baseline, did increase in a small cohort at 12, six months and at 12 months. So patients who did report an improvement in their symptoms showed positive changes in their voided volume, voiding efficiency, and a decrease in PVR. As of now, AMDC appears durable, but limitations of the study include small sample size and lack of randomization. We completed a successful trial in 20 patients without serious event and with some signal of efficacy. We, improved, we saw improvements by GRA with decreased PVR and increased voiding efficiency in many subjects who are catheter dependent at baseline. This is a promising treatment and multi-center studies are required to show further uh, advancement in this field. I'd lastly like to acknowledge the Aiken Center for Neurourology Research, the National Institute on Aging, the Underactive Bladder Foundation, and NIDDK. Thank you.